Encountering an established auteur filmmaker for the first time is one of my favorite moviegoing experiences. Their early work might hold the seeds of their personal style, but jumping into a career well underway means seeing it in full bloom, like stumbling into a new world and having to learn its rules and rhythms from scratch. Fallen Leaves, Qualit Laded, is my first Aki Korismaki film, but his 20th. From what I've read, what I experienced as new is very much of a piece with the Finnish writer-director's previous work. I can assure anyone similarly uninitiated that this makes a wonderful starting point, and not just because it's a great movie in itself. It's a romantic comedy so deadpan that, at first, you might wonder whether human connection is even possible at this level of expressivity. This is, of course, the point, and if genuine relationships still seem like miracles when the 81-minute runtime is up, they also feel more vital than ever. It's such an effective, layered deployment of this approach to filmmaking that I finished it excited to have 19 others like it left to see. Fallen Leave stars make subtle choices that leave a big impression. Alma Poisty reaching out to touch an unconscious Juicy Vatanen in Fallen Leaves Juicy Vatanen and Alma Poisty in Fallen Leaves. Set in present-day Helsinki, Fallen Leaves follows two lonely people about to cross paths, Ansa, Alma Poisty, a grocery store worker conscious of her home's unfilled spaces, and Halapa, Juicy Vatanen, a metalworker who sneaks a drink whenever he's able. Their emotional withdrawal is at odds with their colorful, art, and music-filled environment, but not their peers, who are at most a half-step above them. If their friends, Lisa, Napu Koivu, and Hutari, Yana Haidianen, are as desperate for companionship, they at least do something about it, even if their amusing exchange at the local karaoke bar doesn't go well. That is where Ansa and Halapa first glimpse each other, but it won't be until another chance encounter that they actually interact. We've gotten to see the challenges of their daily lives by then, and learn that this world, and their bosses, isn't always good to them. Anytime someone turns on a radio, hoping for a little escapism, they're greeted with the latest updates on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Perhaps, Korismaki's movie suggests, disaffection is a valid response to this reality we live in. So, when these two people meet and sparks fly, it becomes all the more meaningful. One consequence of Fallen Leaves' performance style is that we become extra sensitive to change in the actors, and the subtlest of smirks during the protagonist's first date had me grinning ear to ear. Vatanen, whose character is almost always some level of drunk, gets the short end of the stick as the film's most subdued presence, but Poisty really shines in contrast. A gentle optimism ebbs and flows in her, deflated by hardship and reignited by moments of connection. The hope Ansa has for Halapa beams through in her eyes whenever she looks at him, and it's infectious. Watching Korismaki's movie can only get you so far. Juicy Vatanen as Halapa smoking indoors in Fallen Leaves Juicy Vatanen in Fallen Leaves. As is the nature of these stories, just as the universe brought them together, events, some touchingly dramatic, others comically coincidental, conspire to keep them apart. But throughout this turbulence, we cling to the hope it'll all work out for them. This is how Korismaki's larger message really sinks in. His film is filled with art of all kinds, representing, as Hutari's karaoke performance illustrates, the human desire to share ourselves with others. The characters are surrounded by it, but still, they are blanks, art is no substitute for real interaction. There's an acknowledgement of this movie's limitations nestled in that theme, but Fallen Leaves has an answer for that. Ansa and Halapa go to the movies together in one scene, to see, in a wink to another deadpan comedy about disaffection, Jim Yarmouche's The Dead Don't Die, and two patrons exit the theater discussing their experiences with it. The lines themselves may play as jokes, but the fact remains that this is one of the few instances of non-primary characters actually talking to each other. The central couple then fill a first-date silence by doing the same. The value of cinema is not in connecting with the filmmaker's point of view, but as a means to connect with each other. Here the movie's perspective on technology starts to make sense. Devices that ask us to take our eyes off our fellow humans are conspicuously absent. Radios are very prominent, but TVs are nowhere to be seen, and the rare appearance of a cell phone is only to make calls. When Ansa needs a computer, she is overcharged for 30 minutes of use at a local cafe, as if the film is taxing her. The irony of reviewing Fallen Leaves for its streaming release is not lost on me, so I'll do my part by recommending that you not only watch it, but find a way to share however it made you feel with another living, breathing person. Barring that, a certain third-act development makes me think talking out loud to a pet about it would be considered an acceptable alternative. 